beyond bloodlines or borders, neighbors or relatives, tribes or families, Africa is within us and with us, therefore, I am 54 nations in one, yep. and my mother is known as the cradle of life. I am not from Africa. I am Africa. Thank you. Welcome to Integration TV, the only network giving you the Somali diaspora experience. I'm Hoden Nalea. Thank you so much for joining me. You know how much I love introducing to the world Somali talent. Last month, we introduced you to Marion Chiso, the Somali girl who sings in Somali, but born in Canada. Well, this month, I'm so excited to introduce Ahmed Nomadic. He is a poet extraordinaire from Edmonton, Alberta, who's actually here joining me in studio. He travels around the world teaching poetry in different seminars to youth around the world. And on top of that, he's actually like a guest at folk festivals, things that we don't even know about as Somalis, guys. This guy is made it. Ahmed Nomadic, welcome to Integration TV. Thank you very much. Hodan, uh, it's a pleasure as usual. Uh, last time we were chatting, it was through Skype. Yeah, Skype, yes. So that's this right. time to be here, it's an honor. Uh, thank you for welcoming me. Uh, you've been like family to me, so I really appreciate uh, the fact that I get to chill out and hang out and live. Hey, person. You, know, you know, I love talent, and one of the things that I love is especially Somali talent. And I think you're such a talented young man. Thank so you. tell us how you got started in poetry. You know, it all started from theater work. Uh, it's the ground up. I used to do a lot of theater in uh, grade uh, seven and eight, and then I went to nine, and I really enjoyed it. And I started doing community theater. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I went to comedy writing and performance at Humber. Uh, and then I realized I really just love writing, period. Uh, and then I started to realize more about the Somali oral tradition and how important it is. And, and so I, I wrote poetry, but I never really shared poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that I did a lot of uh, stand-up comedy and theater really made it easy for me to perform poetry. And so in 2009, uh, my wife introduced me to a poetry reading. And so I went and presented it, and it went really well. And ever since then, I've been performing poetry. And in 2013, I became a professional, meaning I make 100% of my income off of poetry. That's amazing. Yeah. And you just became a father. Yes, I did. I just did. saw the pictures of your adorable daughter, Thank mashallah. You. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. A daughter. Welcome to parenthood. Three months. She's beautiful. Uh, if all children are like this, I'm going to have 20,000 children. <laughs> no, that's a joke. But I'm going to... Ten wives? Yeah. No, no. Never ten wives. I can't. I'm not that type. I just can't do that. One wife and she's perfect. She's amassed to at least ten women herself. So I'm, I'm very grateful. But alhamdulillah, yeah, I'm a father now. It's been a fantastic journey. You know what the funny thing is? Uh, me and my wife, when we were announcing, uh, we found out she was pregnant. We said uh, we're publishing a poem together in nine months. And the coincidence is that my daughter was born on the first day of National Poetry Month, which is April. Wow. And so she was the actual poem that we wrote together. So alhamdulillah, with uh, God's publishing. What did you guys name your daughter? Layla. Layla. Yeah, oh, mashallah. We named her Layla because she kicked a lot during nighttime. <laughs> Layla to Qadr as well, when God's closest mashallah. to the earth and stuff. So. That's amazing. Yeah. So basically, you do this full time. Correct. This is your career. Correct. There's no looking back. No. What's the response been from your family? At first, it was, you know, a lot of times Somali parents, uh, th their intention is not to really uh, deprive you of your, your dreams. Uh, they're just thinking about your financial security and your stability, and that's their main concern. They want to make sure that you're living well. And so they were concerned at first because how do you make money off of art, right? Like a lot mm. of people are like, it's art. You don't make money off art. You do art for therapy. You do art for fun. But to make money off of it is... It's unheard of. And so when my mom and dad realized that I was doing a lot of poetry and I was getting in the community and I was getting more events and I was traveling internationally, they're really on board because as Somalis, that's our oral tradition. That's what we do. And so for me to carry on something that's Somali, mm -hmm. but in, in a new language was very beneficial for them. And that's why I actually took the name nomadic is because I want to carry my tradition. Like I'm a knowledge-based nomad. I can't hurt camels, but I can hurt words, right? And so I use that as a means to, you know, really extend our culture. And they like that. That's amazing. So was there anyone in your family that was talented like you, like generations back? Because sometimes, like, as Somalis, we, our grandfathers might have been a mid gabega Samaya, you know? Like, yeah. we don't know. You know, my father and uh, mother were great storytellers. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was very witty and very uh, smart on how she used her words. And we never used to get hit at home 
we'd get lectured for hours. And so, <laughs> same words, thing, right? Yeah, and words. So when, when some of my parents lecturing you, it's like, just hit me yeah, already. Yeah, exactly. I was like, when am I going to get the beatings? Can I, can I opt out for this? I want to get the beatings. And so, little things like my mom would one day come home and see that I didn't wash the dishes. And she'd say, Ahmed, wash the dishes. And I'd say, yeah, one second, mom, I'll play video games. And then she'd like, come on, wash the dishes. Say, yeah, mom, I'll, I'll, I'll wash you soon. And then she'll come up to she'd be like, Ahmed, you're the best dishwasher in his house. And I'm like, for real? And then I go wash, I would wash the dishes thoroughly at the end. She'd be like, Ahmed, you're not the best, but thank you for washing the dishes. You know, it's, just, it's that humor within language that really shaped me to go towards that. And, and words are powerful, right? They, they move Absolutely. people. Absolutely. So tell us some powerful words, because everybody's dying to hear your uh, poems. Because I love it. I love the one that you did called This Is Africa. Yeah. Oh, that one just, every time I share that on Facebook, it just makes like, wow. Thank you very much. Uh, I think people can find that online, but there's one... Uh, that I'm currently working on about my, uh, I'll give a snippet of it, is, is one of uh, talking about my identity and where nomadic comes from. And it goes like, um, I was born November 28th, 1984. It was a Wednesday. A sign my mother says I was destined to hold the week together. But she told me to never become complacent because success, she says, comes in Friday casual and never came in Monday blues. The moment I was born, my mother proclaimed me Ahmed, an Arabic name, which is supposed to mean one who constantly thanks God. But ever since 9-11, it means sketchy welfare scam and immigrant terror pirates. You know what? That's it. Everybody give me your attention. I have lessons of mass instructions, and I'm ready to blow all of y'all away with my talent. Because truthfully, I'm just an African trying to make it in the entertainment industry. Man, I barely blow things out of proportion. But let's take in a moment of silence how my career can no longer take my career to the United States to blow up. How I can no longer break into markets without being detained. How I can no longer hold your attention hostage without raising suspicion. Now I know the name Ahmed doesn't encompass my history. And that is why I have adopted the name Nomadic to carry my Somali tradition. It means knowledge based nomad because one of my grandfathers was a farmer. And the other nomad herding animals. I can be neither in the city. So I have adapted to planting ideas that feed thoughts. And harvesting emotions while traveling and making a living off of words that are heard. Now my mother jokes that even my spirit is a nomad and that my poems are much like a caravan because she said even my words are moving. But the thing is, growing up, my parents couldn't afford toys, so they replaced them with endless amount of stories. And because I had nothing else, I played with monster truck metaphors and action hero alliterations and linguistic spars of my friends and family facilitated to further perfect my powerful punchlines. But it was my mother's gentle intellect that eased the understanding of her raising points is far more supreme than raising fists and that money has nothing to do with the process of becoming enriched. So that's a snippet of it. But that's amazing. Thank you very much. You almost scared me with the terrorism prize. Like, whoa! Yeah, no, it just, it's, it's, it's making a joke. I as, love it, yeah. Yeah, it's making a joke because humor, humor has a way of, especially when I was learning comedy, humor has a way of uh, breaking down barriers. Yes. A lot of times I work with uh, people who are Adan, who have never experienced the struggle Somali has. And so instead of being like, oh, you guys are terror, like you're the terrorist, or you guys don't understand it, that, that comes off the wrong way. Education is important, right? Yes. Bringing people in and allowing their voice to be heard, but at the same time sharing your stories is very valuable. So I, I put it into something that's more digestible without mm -hmm. coming off as offensive or rude, but at the same time still letting them know what you're saying is incorrect. Absolutely. So do you have advice you want to share with young people out there? Do what you love. I know that sounds crazy, but mental health is very valuable. In the Somali community, we don't really honor mental health. Uh, we don't really value it or even respect that we have something called mental health. Our, po our parents and us were currently focused on our pocket's health, which is in our mental health. You can be making uh, 100K uh, a year, but if you're not happy, if you're not satisfied, then what is that money really worth? You only live one life, right? We come to this world to uh, be good human beings, to uh, be good Muslims, but at the same time to live a life that's truthful to yourself because right. in a world of 7 billion people, who's going to come that's exactly like you? No one. Like if we lived trying to be like other people or work in 9 to 5, we wouldn't have Mahatma Gandhi's, we wouldn't have Malcolm X's, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have Muhammad Ali's, we wouldn't have these people. Mm -hmm. People like Shakespeare that we learn from. So be yourself, whatever it is that you believe in, follow that dream. And if it doesn't work out, it might only be a preparation for something else. So just continue to believe in yourself and that's, just be you. Absolutely. That's beautiful advice. Yeah. And like we always say here at Integration TV, it, culture helps move change and bring change about in art. Truth. That's 100% true. You're right. Culture is, uh, art drives culture and culture continues legacies, right? Absolutely. It's very important. That's why like, I, I'm Somali. I speak, uh, I speak Somali. I speak uh, English, but these things. Oh, Somali or Kwadisha? Of course, or Kwadisha. Yeah, Somali, I'm Somali. No, I think I'm not Somali. No, I'm not Somali. No, I'm Somali. No. I'm Somali. Man, I think I'm going to be Facebook Live. I'm Somali. I'm going It was very interesting. Wow, I'm Somali. I'm going to be 
لكن وكو ادق هاي لكن ادق وي لك دتك على حد لنا دتك وكو بدنا على حد لو ما عندنا دو اصلا مالك هذا الكرو ده اللي ينير ودن كان كو كرين مفاهم يعني انا يعني وحاوا حد هذا كود هذا كود قالي انه قد عاب هذا قبل قف على حد الكرتيد وكلمة يعني اصلا ما لو كو حد لو حان سكود يعني سكود رو جبه او في انجليز اي يا في سومالي ناس كود رو لبده او يار يار كده 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 I remember when we first came to Canada, saw snow and wanted to play. Hoy wouldn't let us because it was minus. Wow, So it's just, yeah, it's just jokes because these are the things that we go through day to day and people understand that. And so that's what with the youth coming up, I let them know that our language is important. And I know you're breaking it down, but it's still, as long as you're using the language, it's valuable. So, that's another thing. That's why that's another thing. That's why I said, 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 That's true. Like, well, thank you so much, Ahmed, for joining me on this segment. And Ahmed's going to continue to stay with us. We've got some other talented Somalis that are going to join us on the panel. And we're going to discuss more about how do we keep reviving art and culture in our community so that we can give young people a voice. Thank you very much, Alden. Right. We'll be back right after these messages. Integration TV, live from Toronto, Canada.